What's going on, guys? Uh, we are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, we are slowly but surely making our way through all the mods, and we've been doing a good job. We had a little hiatus. Market was crazy, but we are back now. So uh, we have Clow on today. Uh, so Clow, thank you for coming on. What's up? Thank you guys for having me. We've been planning this for a while. I've kind of been a bitch and canceling a lot because I've been busy and tired and shit. So I apologize, but glad we can get it going and glad we can finally at least link up a little bit. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess to start it off, I mean, um, maybe you just want to give like kind of like a brief kind of bio summary of like maybe like how you found trading, how you got into it, um, you know, just stuff like that. Okay. So, so I'll introduce myself and talk a little a little bit about myself. So my name is Claudio Soriano. We were actually talking about it. Uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. My whole family is from Chile though. So my brother and me are the only Puerto Ricans in the family. All my other families from South America, Argentina, Germany. So um, um, I have a bachelor degree in electrical engineering and a master's degree in process engineering. Mm -hmm. So I've been working for the past maybe 15, 20 years on and off in pharmaceutical companies. So that's why I love PharmaPlace. You know, when, oh, wow. yeah. when, I, when, I, when I see these, uh, these stickers, uh, I, I go into deep to see what, like, for example, I have uh, today, I was looking at CZAN, Z-S-A-N, mm -hmm. yeah. they had news. And I was explaining Mamatai what were the news about. So yeah. because I have all that knowledge of those past years, I can go in and understand what they're asking. And yeah, then that's actually really cool. Ones. Yeah, that's so, cool. So yeah. I've I've worked in Amgen, Pfizer, Milan, all big, uh, a lot of big pharma. So I, I have like an edge in understanding what they're actually saying when when they're when there's a phase one, phase two, and phase three. So that that's that that's I love uh, pharma play. They're, are pretty dangerous there because you don't know when things are going to go your way, but yeah. um, I've managed. Okay. So I started trading, you know, that when, when I was preparing for this interview, I was thinking where I got the money to start. And yeah. I just remember uh, back, in, I started trading in 2008. Uh, and uh, it's funny because I had a club a club, an actual club, right? Yep. And we open up, we open it, and we had a situation with the mayor of the of the city we were in, and we finished in court. And for four years, we were in court with them. Where, and where was this? Where, where in, Puerto was? Rico, in, in Puerto, Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, cool. Yeah, and, and, and then um, I, I won that uh, lawsuit, and he gave oh, me, shit. I think, like $70,000. So I pay off my dad, that I owe some money, I pay off my, my brother, and I think I, I, I was left with like 30 something thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And- um, There's no uh, PDT, also, there's nothing like that over there. No, no, no there, of... yeah, no, no, there, there was PDT. Yeah, there was Oh, PDT. wow, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yep. In 2008, there, there's still, yeah. Uh, okay. so, so, so I took some class, I think I paid like $5,500 for some guys that had like, uh, like, um, uh, course on learning how to trade in New York. Yeah. So I, I went into trading, but it was 2008. So 2008, yeah. the market <laughs> crashed. So yeah. basically anything that you put money into, you were making money. So I remember that after six months of trading, I was up like $90,000 and I was like, that's it. <laughs> this is it. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. But one thing, one, the major difference I see from back then to now is that back there I was alone. So yeah. I didn't have anyone to talk to about trading. So yeah. in Puerto Rico, no one knew. I only knew one guy in Puerto Rico that traded and he was like super, he didn't want to say anything or nothing. He, he just yeah. said that he was um, cheap, like um, pastor cheap. He, yeah. he calls stocks cheap, so he was yeah. overlooking his chips, and that's it. He didn't care to teach uh, no one. So, how did you find him? How, how did you meet him? How did you meet him? A friend, a friend is yeah, a, is just, a friend okay. of mine. Yeah, yeah. but he didn't want to teach anyone. So basically, like maybe a year into six, six months, nine to I, I I didn't blow up, but I basically stopped trading. Yeah. Then yeah. after that, fast forward to 2019. So. There's a story. So I, I came to the United States after Hurricane Maria. Mm -hmm. um, I lost 
my house, I, I still haven't touched it from Yurik and Maria. So Yurik and Maria, it didn't destroy the house, but it basically unlivable right now. So we came here um, and we moved a lot of, through a lot of places, like we moved like in six months, four times in order to see what, what and I had a, a, a little money saved, but mm -hmm. we came from Puerto Rico to Florida with one suitcase each and a couple of thousand dollars. How so old were you? Uh, this was 2017. Okay. 30, how old were you? So, I'm, I'm 43 now. 43, so, so you were like 37, something like that? Yeah, more or less. And I mm -hmm. have two kids. And so each, came, each one came to the United States with one suitcase. We're, we're, yeah. People do yeah. not know, but Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Yeah. So we, we don't we don't we don't need like visas. People think that we need visas, green cards. We don't need any of that. We are American citizens. We that's an, another story. Anyway, the thing is that we came here, we started looking for opportunities. I was looking for a job because I was working in Pfizer at the time as a consultant when you oh, and cool. when Maria hit, they yeah. basically get, let go of all the consultants. So I'm out of a job. I come here, a friend of mine helped me out, but then he tells me, okay, th this is for a limited time period. Then yeah. you have to figure it on your own. So that's why we move a lot of places. And the thing is that that was in September 22, maybe. Yeah. September 22, 2017. I landed my first job on April 2018. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I had to go back to Puerto Rico. Yeah. So I landed a three month three month job in Puerto Rico in Amgen. So I went back to Puerto Rico without my family, left my family in an apartment and started working to yeah. build up money again. I'm not yeah. trading, I'm not trading. I'll, I'll tell you when I start to trade. Is pharmaceuticals, so, like is that line of work in Puerto Rico, is that like very well like respected? Is that like? Yes, it, yeah, Puerto figured, Rico right? is like a mecca of pharmaceutical companies in the world. It's like mm -hmm. really, really big thing. It's like, that's cool. I think is the, the place that has more pharmaceutical companies per square mile in the world. Like Puerto Rico is 100 by 33 miles, 100 yep. miles by 33. So we have yep. so many, it's, it's not pharmaceutical, medical device, combination. There, there are a lot of, but, but we'll call it life science. Cool. So yep. the thing is that after the three months, I came back to the States and started looking for a job mm -hmm. again. And this friend of mine called me and told me, hey man, I need a guy like me, that it will be you. Uh, to, uh, I, I, had a, I have a job in Georgia. Do you want to come? I'm like, I moved my wife to this apartment that we, you see yeah. right now. Yeah. I, actually, I actually slept in that there <laughs> for like a year. No, that was yes. my bed, you know? That's a, I, and I'm a big guy. I, I'm 6'3", yeah. you know? So yeah. we, we, we did from nothing. So we started from like, we didn't have anything. So the curious thing, and I, this is why I want to tell the story. When, we, when I went back to Georgia, I was alone again because it was like a contract for three months, okay? Mm -hmm. But the difference between Georgia and Puerto Rico is that over there, they were paying me 2.5 times the amount of money I was making in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So 2.5 times is a lot of money. Yeah. So I tell my wife, you know what? Because we don't know how much time this gig is going to last let's leave like we were leaving before this job so basically yeah. we were leaving x amount and that 2.5 was going into the bank account into yeah. the bank account. and those three months turned into six months six months turned into a year one year turned to two and fast forward to two years and a half um uh back in covid starting 2020 march april uh 2019 at the end of 2019 i opened an account again yeah and i started trading but, but really lightly yeah january february of 2020 i found you guys i oh, saw sure. an ad yeah. on facebook and i'm like the, the the thing that got me hooked was the community the yeah. name eh, my investing club <laughs> sounds like a Sounds like a kid, uh, like a kid club, you know, but yeah. <laughs> I have, I have like a lot of faith on the work community. So I said, yeah. okay, let me see if this, if they're actually a community. 
if, the, yeah. if this actually means that we are a community. So now, the I whole time, all these yeah. years, were, did you have the trading? Like, were, did you in the back of your head think like, I need to be trading? Or was it kind of something that was like, maybe someday I'll get back to it? Or was it something like, because I know if I took time off, I couldn't sleep without thinking about it. Yeah, I love well. trading. I love yeah. trading. I, yeah. I'm passionate about trading. I've always been passionate about trading, but there's one thing very important about trading that people do not get. In order for that, trading to me is a blessing. You need zero effort, physical effort, but it's a highly emotional game. So every time people tell me, what do you have that others do not, I develop discipline. If you're not disciplined in your life, do not trade, period. Yeah. That's one thing. And the second thing, the second thing is that um, you need money. So when, when I say to a, a person that wants to start trading, this is the method I tell them. You need to save up if you want to take this to the next level, that, like real thing, yeah. not, not like part-time trading. No, no, no. Going to full-time day trading, you need to analyze. How, give me one second. You need to <laughs> analyze. Well, that's a nice view. I know, geez, we get a cross shot. There you go. I, I, I want to look like Bao, like, like he goes. I tell people, you need to figure out how much money you need to leave one month. Like for example, that, that amount is $3,000. That will cover everything. Yeah. So you need to have between $18,000 and $27,000 in the bank account. Yep. That will give you peace of mind. And then mm -hmm. after that, you will need another $30,000 in order for you to trade like you're supposed to. And yep. then you need to go to make and you need to let, learn the process. If you're not going to do it like that, it's not going to work. Because if that money that you're trading with is attached to the electricity bills, yeah. to water, to rent, then yeah. you're highly emotional. And this is emotional already as it is yeah yeah so I, I, if you don't have money you're making yeah. it worse it's like you're on the yeah. loose game you know you have weight on you i mean that's i think why harry and i both like probably did well like kind of quick because i mean i know harry was pretty young so like like harry you didn't have that many overhead expenses yeah, and, i like, had nothing to lose absolutely yeah. nothing to lose right and, and that, so yeah. i was super blessed you were blessed, you were yeah. blessed. I also think like, I, I agree with you hundred percent in that point, because like, even when I come in, my, my, my biggest days, my best days are when I'm not focused on the money at all. And then I look over and I'm like, wow, like this was actually a pretty big day. You know, it's, it's, it's like, no one sets out and says, okay, I'm going to make, you know, this much this day, this much, whatever I need to make this much to, to pay for this, or I need to make this much for that it's all about kind of what the market gives you. And when you're, when you're trying to take from the market, the market has a funny way of like not giving you anything. But when you're, when you have that mindset of, like, you know, it's true, you know, it's true. You know, That's true. when you have that mindset of like, I don't give a shit if I trade today, I don't give a shit what I do. Like, I don't even want to trade. Like, it's funny. Cause like a lot of people, like, you know, I was a college kid in, in college and it'd be a Friday. And, you know, I'd, I'd be hung over because when I was in college, we didn't have classes on Friday. It was just Monday to Thursday. So Thursday night, everyone would go out and then like, no, one, everyone would be kind of like hung over on Friday or whatever. And so I remember I woke up one morning and, and like, I was hung over. I, I did, I really didn't want to trade. And at that point, like I was also shorting as well. And I literally just set my lines to the fantasies. And like, I was also super sick because we had like a bunch of tequila, but they just hit the <laughs> fantasies. They literally hit the fantasy orders, come back down, and it turns into like an all-day fader. And I, I remember looking at it like maybe like uh, 20 minutes or 10 minutes later, and I was like, oh, shit, I got filled, right? Like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And, but like, you know, it's just the process works where, you know, in that, in that state of mind, like you don't even want to trade. You don't even want to get filled. But you're so just addicted and like obsessed with the craft that you also want to put, you know, you, you also want to make a trade, right? So yeah, it's so true. How, like, I'm like, I put, I put it to an area where it's like, I probably won't get filled, but if I do, this is going to be the best area. And then it just works, right? Rather than yep. trying to keep fighting and inner line, inner line, and then get blown out of the range and then only to have the stock reverse on you, right? So yeah. I, 
I, I just find when you want money, the market's never going to give it to you. When you have that mindset of, I don't really need it, or I, I, you know, like I know a lot of doctors who are making really good money and, you know, they don't necessarily need the money, but they trade because they love it. And they're, they're good at trading because they don't really need the, yeah. the it's just a game and it's just that sort of hey, thing. One, I can one be of my trade. best friends, I, I was teaching one of my best friends to trade and like he, it's funny, like I think he understands trading like more than any new person. Like in a month, I got him like very caught up to speed, like fast. But his problem was like he was trying to trade to get out of his like, his like lifestyle. Like he wanted to quit his job. And from that, all he would do was press and press yeah. and press. So like to kind of to Klaus point, it's like, yeah, like if you need the money right now, like you will never, I, in my opinion, you won't be successful unless you get really lucky. The market will make sure to slap you and make you learn. You know, it's like, yeah. you need to let the process flow. That's yeah. the word. It's like, you need it. The, it things start getting like, I, I explain to people that ask me because you know, you guys like, this is funny because uh, James is an intraday short. He specializes in that. Harry is an intraday long, and I'm a long swing trader. So we have three different techniques, three different styles, and they all work. But each one of us look for particular things. It's not the same process that I have. That I always say, do not try to mimic uh, Alex and Bao, because Alex and Bao, if, if we were in college level, they're PhD, and they're, they probably have three or four PhD and Bao has like yeah. the, like 10, 10 PhD on the shit. You know, it's yeah. like that was the college. That, that was yeah. the fucking you college. You cannot right try yeah. to do you can you can see the lines and they will actually work, but in between the lines, how you play it is on you. You have to have your process, yeah. you have to have your so I tell everyone okay. the same thing. Process, rule, discipline, patience. Four things. If you don't have any of those four things, you're 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 coming into the market with money <laughs> yeah that's it you yeah know? i also think like one thing is like also the ability to like kind of deal with stress too you know because during that time you would have been super stressed out right i mean like you're you're not you're not yeah. stressed out but trading is a stressful game and when you when you you know when you have that in the back of my mind okay like am i going to become just consistent i need to make that or i need to make it you know i need to get better like that puts some that can put pressure on people and put stress on people so like was there ever a time where you were just super stressed out and if there was like how do you find that you dealt with that stress you know so you know i i let, let me tell you i'm gonna that that quite i still am dealing with stress in intraday intraday trade yeah. like i can be here and my max size intraday trading can be uh, my max size right now my my max size right now is a thousand shares yeah. I don't go over in mm -hmm. a thousand shares in trading trading. Why? Because I think that you have to level up. It's like a game. I need to For sure. feel comfortable with 300 shares, the up and down of 300 shares in order to be comfortable with 600 shares or a thousand shares. I always see members in the community that they start posting $5,000, $10,000 days. I'm like, good for you. And all of a the sudden they disappear because they don't know how to manage the losing losing yeah. part they, and they blew up yep. so i'm like yep. you have to learn how to make 300 dollars no you have to learn how to make a hundred dollars or 50 dollars first yeah and it's not making them only is that the risk reward so if you're making a hundred dollars then your risk is 30 dollars if you lose 30 dollars you're out you know and that's the, i yeah. think that's the major problem you know you know you, if you're if you want to make 300 dollars a day then you need to risk ninety dollars a day, and if either one of those happen, you're out. You know, yeah. and as you progress, first you learn how to do a hundred, then you learn how to do three hundred, then you learn how to do five hundred, then a thousand. Yeah. yeah, it's you. You don't deserve, or you're not supposed to be trying to trade making one thousand, two thousand dollars like you guys are doing. If you haven't learned how to lose four hundred dollars, because yeah. you sure. blow up. Yeah, you know, 100%. It's, it's, and it's, I mean, when you get started in this game, you know, it, it's not easy, right? Like you really get your ass kicked for like almost a year straight until you just start learning, you know? And that's kind of what happened with me. I actually started when I was in like kind of like high school. And, you know, I was just like continuously 
getting my ass kicked, getting my ass kicked. And then, you know, I guess like through time, you just kind of develop, you refine, you get better. And now I'm kind of where I am. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're super wise for your age. But it's like, no, I just got my ass kicked so hard that I am the person I am today. So like, I guess like, you know, in those kind of early stages where like maybe stuff wasn't clicking or you were learning and looking to get better, um, like what were some things that you did to kind of, um, you know, just get better and just like, as far as like, you know, back testing and learning what works, like what were some things that you did to kind of get yeah. to the point you are now? So, so let me tell you, uh, 2020, January and February, to answer that question, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. So January and February, I come into the community, I see the community, I see you guys, I fell in love with the treatment, you know, what you were having. I'm like, I'm working, so I cannot trade and I cannot take advantage. So I, I write to Tosh and I tell him, I'm leaving, but I'll be back. That was February last year, right? On June, right when the COVID started really hard, COVID started March, April, May, on June, they let me go of Georgia. Yeah. So I've been working in Georgia for two and a half years alone without my family. I'm a really family guy, family oriented guy. I love my family. And for the first time in my life, I was away from my wife. Uh, we, this December, we're 20 years. It's going to be 20 years. Congratulations. Wow. Congrats. And it's yeah. like, Congrats. I know that she put a spell on me because after 20 years, I'm, I still am in love with her. <laughs> She's doing like this. <laughs> yeah, she looks so. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You looked over to make he sure put a spell shot. on me i'm still after 20 years i see i see i see stars for her but the thing is that um when they let me go i wasn't worried i wasn't scared because i sat down with my wife in that chair in that table over there that you see yeah there yep. and she's over there and I said, you know what, Migdi? We have enough money to live like we live right now for three years. We don't have to do nothing. Period. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. I said, I need one month of vacation so I can enjoy my kids because my kids weren't without his dad for two. I came in every weekend, but I didn't spend in those two and a half years more than three weeks yeah. together. Like uh, yeah. from one week to the other three weeks so i was going so I coming and going coming and going coming and going so um i tell her give me one month and in that month i tell my i tell me the you know what i wanna i wanna go back to the community and i wanna um, and i wanna see if i can become a lifetime member so i wanna make the commitment yeah. so i call yeah. tosh we talk and i became a lifetime member on july period. Uh, I came into wow. the community, I paid the lifetime membership. So now I open a second account. And no, I open a second account, I think in March, and then I open Cobra account in July, right? Were you were you only doing uh, swing trades at that point? Or did you not even know like what? No, no, I, wa I was swing trading, but very little. So okay. once I became a lifetime member, I, I, I got the ball where I left it back in February and started watching videos again. I started watching videos, yep. videos, videos. I start complementing what I know with the videos and start doing a process that is actually replicable and I can work it out. And that's yep. where I'm at right now. So July comes, end of July, and remember that I have a negotiation with my wife. I tell her I, just, I want one month and after that month, I was gonna go back to looking for another job for the next opportunity, but COVID is in. Yep. So after July, I see the back, bank accounts and I see that I've made twice what I made in Georgia in the first month. And like, okay, maybe wow. it's a coincidence, you know? Uh, maybe it's a coincidence. But I tell Migdalia, okay, I already covered what with what I made this month. So yeah. we trade into August. And when August finishes, I'm three times what I made in Georgia up. And, and I go cool. like, okay, Mick D, I, I think I don't need to go back to work, you know, because yeah. it, as long as I'm doing this and it's working and I'm calm, 
I'll keep refining my process. Yeah. But we don't have to worry about money. Were you scared so, that it was luck? Were you scared that you were just getting lucky at any point? Because I've had that point. That, that's the thing. That first, second month, third month, I, I went even. But on November, that July, August, September, October, on November, I made eight times what I wow. made in Georgia. Wow. So that made it for me. That, that yep. I was like, and I was trading like really calm. Yep. I'm, I'm not going crazy. I'm just waiting. There's sometimes, last week, I, I didn't trade it Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I stood in front of the computer. Yeah, I was here in front. I was I was helping members and I was looking at charts. I, I had screen yeah. time. I think one of you two guys are all constantly talking about the screen time. To me, yeah, it's so no, important dude. to understand the flow of the stock. Yeah, because 100%. if you understand it, you can play it way better yep. than yep. person that just go in and that's it. So yeah. I'm like my 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 wife tells me here's the where's the, the negotiation change she told me as long as i have six months to a year cash in the bank accounts you can keep on trading yeah and this this has happened from july on to august september on to february and i think my only losing month was december and it was like real i'm still working around intraday trading yeah. I've been I've been getting a lot of um, rapport by Amin, yeah. Uh, but still, I don't. I I know I can't be good at everything. I'm still exploiting yeah. the, what what I'm good at. You know, my my yeah. my forte is day trading. Long so I I was watching Neo. I'm already all my shares of Neo are, are long term capital right now. I've been holding it for more than a year. I have wow. another stock that I saw today, Clovis, that I've been saying that this will blow up sometime because he has cancer approved drug. Yeah. Anyway, but I've been holding it for more than a year too. You know, it's, I, I, yeah. I have the discipline to, if a stock is working, I doesn't hit where I think it's going to, well, AMC is getting killed. Anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm watching GME right now. GME is at 182. Yeah, I'm not even. My screens are off. I'm fucking yeah, tired. It's getting I'm a freaking addict. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that. So, so Claude, uh, did your did your wife was she? Oh, I mean, she can hear me, right? Yeah. No, just, okay. just make it. Just make it sure. Um, no, no. Was she always like? I don't want to say supportive because it sounds like she was supportive, but was she ever questioning? Was she ever like? Because my my whole family, everyone at some point was like. Dude, what what the fuck are you even doing? Like, what, even if I make money, like, what are you doing? I don't get it. And what was she ever questioning of that? Did she ever of, understand? Like, yeah, of, of course, man, she yeah. was. But you know what? Every day at the end of the, I I hold three accounts. I have Robinhood yeah. account, a TD account, and a yeah. Cobra account. So every day at eight p.m., I go in front of my computer to an Excel spreadsheet that I have, and I put how much I made or how much I lose. Yep. And I tell her, today we make X amount of dollar or today we lost X amount of dollars. So she has been seeing the progress yeah. of the accounts going up yeah. and up. And the other thing is, you just have to, the best thing about relationship is that if you see her as, you, as your enemy, turn into your friend. So yeah. I brought her uh, and I started, uh, uh, she started learning. She took the accelerator course like two times and she started <laughs> trading. So it's yeah. not the same thing, you know. I, I um after a while she stopped because uh we were I, I think I've said it before we're writing a book and we're in yeah. the last phase of the book nice. and uh, and we're she's working on the with the editor hand to hand to complete the the the, the, the uh, like there are a couple of chapters that still need editing because people yeah. think that writing is the easy part. No, it's not yeah. writing. It's yeah, editing yeah. the damn book that it has taken us a lot, you know. Yeah. So right so, now, I'm in the process of turning this into a business. I, I sat down with Brian, and I'm I'm partnering up with another guy, with the guy from Georgia, the one that yeah. gave me the opportunity in Georgia. He's gonna work. He's gonna start working there. So we're gonna oh, be two, two people trading cool. at the same time, you know. So we're gonna. I I believe that if you have someone right next to you or two people right next to you it's like it's it's you hold accountable to the guy that is yep. right next to you 
that's it's why like a tab program really on crack yeah 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 it's, it's, it's the same as a tab, but instead of having it in the screen, you have yeah. it right next to you. you That's know? amazing. That's really cool. So, what is the what is the book? If you can, you talk about like how did you yeah. decide to write a book? Like what how is it so, even, what's it about? So, my wife is a counselor and a social worker. Okay. So she had worked with uh, young adults for a lot of time, you know, and she yeah. worked in public school back in Puerto Rico, and she used to do workshops and. Uh, I started getting involved in what she was doing as a hobby. And yeah. I started reading books about human emotion and human behavior. Mm -hmm. So I got really good at it. And we started doing workshops together. Like our target customer is from 18 to 30 years old. Yeah. So the book is about everything that you guys, because you're that age, you too, yeah. Everything that you're living, working, struggling, the book talks about. You know, it's, it it's has cool. a chapter that is called Mommy and Daddy. It has a chapter that is called You're Gonna Fuck It Up. It has a chapter about money, about managing money. It has a chapter about relationships. So it has a chapter That's about cool. what do you want to do with your life. And it's like, it's like a guide. It's a, the, the name of the book is What the Fuck is Happening to Me? <laughs> a, practical guide, a practical guide for... 18 to 30 year old young adults basically I love that. so that's cool it's a fucking weird age i mean it's like a really weird age you know to it's me, like that yeah to me to me is the most beautiful age because mm. there's a chapter that is called uh como se llama el de ING? Is ah 20s is everything no como es como es en español ah okay 20s are for everything that ends up in ing <laughs> yeah. Okay, like so that. that's traveling, studying, experimenting, um, sex, but I don't know what word we use in English. Fucking. Fucking, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> exactly. So, exactly, that, that's it. So, to me, 20 is the most perfect age. You should enjoy yeah. it, guys, because you don't have enough responsibilities but you're on the clear too. Like you're starting to live life like it's supposed to. Once you turn 30, like what, what Joe is struggling in right now that he just turned 30 and he thinks he's an old fart. So that's when things start to get real. Like you, you start changing your mindset into, I need to uh, have a house or rent a house or buy a house. I need to have a job. I need to have neat, 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 neat. In the twenties, you're just, living life you know if yeah. you're intelligent you'll travel to the whole world uh, if you're intelligent you'll experiment uh with other people and with you you know and, yeah. and there to me is the most important age through your lifespan is the is the is the that that age between 20 and 30 so enjoy it guys i'm, I'm i love that I love that. Yeah. I mean sometimes I sometimes I feel like tw I'm 26 and I feel like I fucking I'm close to death but it really is so young, you know. You, it's just crazy. I mean, I, I look at Harry. I'm like, Jesus, dude. Like, even yeah, I'm twenty. Really lucky. Yeah, dude. It's weird. It's a weird thing, and, it, and it's weird. I think trading too. It like trading is a, a weird profession because I feel like it accelerates your age in a weird way because it's a job that has so much to do with the world. Like, even if you're trading small caps, you still understand like market sentiment. You understand like what's going on in the world because it's stuff you pay attention to. Yep. And I think, I think it just gives you a different perspective on life too, because it's also a job that like for me, like I knew that if I could be a successful trader, I wouldn't have to work. I could do everything I wanted to do. Cause when you're in your twenties, like, yeah, you want to travel and do all that, but sometimes you're just poor. Sometimes you have no money. Like some of my friends, they got like $10 to their names. And, yeah. and it's like, it's like trading is like one of the only jobs that like I think is the perfect job for young people. Cause it's like, dude, I trade an hour a day. Most of us do like we trade for an hour and then you have the whole day to do whatever you want, go do what you want. And, and that's why I think it's such a cool profession. Yeah. But you need to know that there's a, there's life outside the, in front of the computer. Yeah. Yep. You know, Which is why I, I love trading. That's why I, like, I always try to explain to members like, dude, trade for an hour a day and like whatever the process gives you like accept it because there is life outside of this like i think it's like i love when i see people studying and like working really hard but at the same time it's like <laughs> to your son yeah uh, but, at, but, at, but at the same time it's like there's life outside of this and like you have to enjoy it or else it'll kind of go by pretty quick yeah oh, i agree you need, to, you, you need to enjoy life you know it's like if you make this your life job 
you're blessed, man. Really, yeah. you're blessed. You you only need a computer and internet, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Anything it's, else? But you need crazy. to focus on everything else matters. You know, it's like you have a life outside the computer. Yeah. And you need to enjoy the money that you're doing too. That that's you're what Alex getting. is doing right now. Alex is fucking enjoying his life, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's like, I love it, dude. Like, cause when I first met Alex, like I thought he was the biggest workaholic and that's like how we became friends. We would always talk about just how there's just no time to do anything. Like it was 24 seven, like either you're at your job or you're helping people or whatever. And like seeing someone like that, like actually just enjoy his money and like blow $10,000 on bottle service, like makes me happy. Cause it's like, dude, you're, you're enjoying it. Like what's the point of all this? Like all the money you make, like same with you, right? Like you, I'm sure you get to spend a lot of time with your family now. And it's like, that is what this is all about. Like, there's more to this than just like the dollars in your account. It's more just like what you can do with that freedom and, and the money in your account. Yeah, you got to really remember, I guess, where you started, right? Like, I mean, everyone has a reason why they got into this game. And a lot of the time, you know, by the time you kind of reach maybe the consistent or the whatever, um, that's either not a goal anymore or... I mean, sometimes it is, right? Like spending time with your kids, that's always going to be a goal. But, you know, let's say for me, when I got into this game, you know, I was just like, oh, well, I'm going to make a bunch of money and, um, you know, that's all I want to do. But now once you, once you make money and stuff like that, you kind of realize that, you know, it's not about, I mean, I guess for me, it really wasn't about, I'm kind of from a small town in Canada. And if I went out and let's say, got a Porsche, for instance, you know, everyone would hate me in my town. You know, I realize that now, right? Like everyone in my town would hate me. So for me, it really ended up not being about that. But now it's more so about my own freedom, my own time. And exactly what you said, you know, my own ability to really do whatever I want, really, when I want to, you know? Yeah. I mean, Cloud, you got into this. Like, I mean, you were telling in the beginning about how much your family matters to you. And it's like, you ended up in a profession where you probably had no idea you'd end up in this, but you're now in a profession where like family can come first almost all the time. Like, you don't have to trade every day. You don't have to come to the screens every day. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have you to do shit. <laughs> but one thing that, that I, I really want to point out out of everything is not, you have to be happy doing it. You know, you have yeah. to really enjoy trading because money is a vehicle. Money means shit. Once you die, you cannot take that money. So yep. if you generate money trading, make sure that you go out and enjoy that money. That's what Alex is doing right now because he was playing a, a game that he was working, 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 putting so, me, so much pressure on himself and he was driving himself insane because he yep. was putting so much pressure on him. The moment that he realized that he enjoys, and, and I'm, I, I didn't talk to Alex about it, I'm just guessing that. Yeah. Yeah. You need to enjoy this, right? If this is something that makes you sad or make you uncomfortable or make you miserable, don't do it. Go yeah. look for something else that you're passionate about, you know? Because yeah. life is about being happy. And happy doesn't come from outside. It comes from inside. People think that happiness comes from... So I, I'm not happy making money. I'm happy generating it, you know? Yeah. So it's... It's a big, it's a big difference, and do, and people do not know. Like I, I, I say always this example with girlfriends. Like I, I hear people saying she makes me happy. No, dude, she doesn't make you happy because then you're attaching your happiness to her, and when she leaves, then happiness, your happiness will live with her. You're happy being with her. You understand the difference? Yeah, that's big. Yeah, I so, think I think for me, like. I mean, like, I really respect the route that Alex took where, like, Alex, Alex, Alex set himself the fuck up, right? Like, Alex, Alex spent time learning this shit, saving his money, really, you know, accumulating everything, not going out and buying a bunch of, you know, fancy cars and shit like that. Although he did, you know, he, he obviously did go down, like, he, he, you know, he bought some nice cars, like, when he was really, really set up. But he really spent a lot of time, you know, just focusing on his craft to be able to be where he is now. And for me, I like, I really like, I'm still going down that route, but you know, like 
that was something that I really wanted to do too, where, you know, I didn't want to go out and party. I didn't want to go out and do all those things because I wanted to set, you know, I kind of looked at it, you know, if, if I spend like two to three to four years really narrowing down and really spending a lot of time and sacrificing that much on this game, then for the rest of your life, you know, you're pretty much free. So I think that there is a lot of sacrifice in the, those first three years, right? You know, some people would say it's a hell, but if you really love this game, it's really not. And those three, four years of kind of like sacrifice, just kind of, you know, not, not focusing on other things, not going off track, keeping, keeping to your goals, keeping focused, you know, can change your life if done correctly and if done right. But, you know, how have I been going out and partying and like trying to do all this shit? you know, I, I don't know where I would be right now, you know? So I think it, it is a really fine balance for me. And, you know, I just think that like staying focused, knowing, knowing your goals, knowing where you want to be and what you want to get and where you want to get to and how you're going to get there is like really, really crucial just for, I think, just, just becoming consistent in this game, you know? Yeah. I think there's a lot of takeaways from this too, that, like for cloud, it's like, you know, you didn't take that long to become profitable, which is amazing. And like, I think that that really speaks to you, like your drive and stuff, but I think it really speaks to that, you know, there is like a little bit of recipe for success for a lot. And like, for you, it was like being comfortable, like knowing you had some money in the bank and some stuff to kind of fall back on. So the stress level wasn't there. Yeah. And two, you, you did this for a reason. Like you got into trading because you wanted to take care of your family. You wanted to spend time with them and be with them and have that freedom. And I think that, like you said I, earlier, Harry, is like, or I think Klaus said, you, you get into trading for the wrong reason. Like, it won't work for you. But when you come into this game and you have, like, a reason to make money, I mean, like, I think it accelerates you that much more. And it's not like you're forcing it. You're just, like, you are driven. And, like, that's what allowed you probably to be so successful so fast. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to add to, 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 um, to what Harry said that is really important and what you said, too. You need to have goals, and that, those goals have to have two questions. What do you want for when? Because people tend to go and say, ah, I want $100,000. Okay, how are you going to generate those $100,000? And when are you going to generate it? How much time is going to take you to do that? Once, and then the word sacrifice, I, I, I would love to change it for commitment. Instead of saying that we're sacrificing, I, I think that the better word, the better use for the word is commitment. You're committed into generating whatever you want. For me, is is a lifestyle. In in, in I I don't want to be away from my family. So for me, it's like either I generate the money that I need, and I need X amount of money. It can be the the number doesn't matter. You know, it can be one thousand dollar, five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar. It doesn't matter. But after one month, if I haven't made that money that I, I needed or I wanted, I need to look back and see what I was doing wrong in order to reassess my process. I'm always saying that this is a, a game that you need to tweak it. So Harry has his process and it works for him. You have, um, James, you have your process and it works for you. But I'm pretty sure that if something doesn't work, you need to go back and see what's wrong and you tweak it a little bit and you make it work again. You know, but each, each person has to make their process. The process that works for them and makes money, consistently makes money, that's it. That's what you're looking for. And you have rules that are set on stone. If you don't have rules, that's why 90% of people blow up. That's why they say that 10 traders out of 10 traders, one only make it. I think it's two. But let's yeah. leave it out. I don't know. I think it's true. But the, the main reason I, I say people think that consistency, and I've, I've, I've said that in the videos a lot, people they, they, they have this mindset that consistency is the key to be a good trader. No, the, the, the consistency is not it for me. That's my opinion. To me, if you want to be a good trader, you need to do risk management. Risk management. But yes. a lot. If you don't know how to lose money, you're fucked. Yeah, uh, because a hundred dollars. If you if you said that you were gonna lose a hundred dollars in one day and you ended up losing a thousand dollar, you're done. So because yep. that thousand dollar, the next day will be five thousand dollars, and the next day yep. is, your your account is blown. And well, look we, at Bear. I mean, Bear. He like he he's not even like I wouldn't call him consistent because 
he could lose seven days in a row, but on his winning day, make 30x. He's that. killing it. So, yeah, he's, he's killing, killing it. it. He's killing he's it. He's killing it. But he has a process, he has yeah. rules, he has consistency, and he has discipline. Yeah. Four things. It's, that's it's the, amazing. In my book, that those are the four things that the do, the four pillars of a trader are, are those four things. Yeah. If you don't have them, there are videos in the library that talks about everything that we have talked right now. There's nothing new. That's the thing. Yeah. Like yeah. you, you guys, as, as, as and I'm the I'm I've been a month, what three four months. You yeah. guys, I'm pretty sure that find uh, difficulty in in doing a new team because you have talked. Chad, you have covered everything already. You know, it's yep. like, and it's like being repetitive, yep. like going over and over the same things, you know, it, and it's, and I know that sometimes it gets, first, I, I really get pissed off each time in the mod chat, they said this guy blew up I, because I feel responsible, even though yep. I'm not responsible because I wasn't the guy that was touching the buttons. But I yep. say, how come if we, if we take so much pride and time in, in making you guys, in making the community successful, even though it's not respon my responsibility for you guys to be successful, when you blow up, I, I get pissed off. I get, I don't know if that happened to you guys, but I get Oh really my God, dude, every day. I mean, I, I text Alex about it a lot, actually, because it's like, I feel the same way. Like, I hate seeing someone struggling, right? Like, that's why I try to do, and I know Harry, everybody, we do our best to, to get on the phone with people and help because it's like, this is trading's weird because once you make it in trading, I don't want to say make it, but once you're, once you're making money and successful, profitable. Once, you're profitable. Yeah, once you're profitable, you yeah. understand what it's like to not be profitable. And, and honestly, like, I think a lot of it with a lot of the members that aren't doing well are the people that are just like, they're almost fighting the process. And I think that whether you're a swing trader, whether you are intraday, small caps, large caps, there is a basic process that MIC like teaches. And like, like you said, it's like the four pillars, it's very similar to that. And I think people fight it. And like I said, kind of earlier, it's like what makes someone good is like what you had, you had a drive to, to be successful. You had a reason to be successful and you weren't stressed about it. And I think that once you kind of find that like Zen, like that, that happy medium, that's when like trading becomes easier. And like, like, dude, like the fact that you became profitable and we're making money that fast is like, ridiculous like it's ridiculous but and it's amazing and i i commend you on it because it's it's that was not me but i mean and you i think because you did that because of how your mindset was and you're going to continue that into the future like like going forward like what is it that you're looking to do with your trading and life in general like is this what you want to do is there more to it besides trading with uh your your old the guy who gave you the, the opportunity or what is it so I want to keep on the intra. I, wa I want to improve my intraday trading skills I, I, yep. because swing trading, like people ask me, what, what are you doing different? And I was thinking right now while you were talking, and I said, you know what? Watch all Harry's videos yep. and think about in, instead of intraday, think about uh, long swing trading. Look at the yep. bigger, biggest picture. It's the same thing. I'm not doing any different at what Harry is doing. Harry looks at major support and goes in and goes out. He does it on an intraday basis. I do it on a weekly, monthly. Yeah. There's, there's no Kool-Aid. There's no secret sauce yeah. to that. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. And Harry has so much videos on it. I'm saying Harry because I'm talking about yeah. long trading. You know, it's not like, but my future where I see me right now. So the book, the, the reason I wrote the book is because I love giving workshops in college level and high schools. Yep. So where I see myself once the book get up, gets out is I see myself doing workshops, trading, oh. and investing in, in flipping houses. That's the next thing that I'm doing because I want to generate different incomes of money. I'm 43, man. This is, this is downhill right now. I need to start making, uh, I need to make money while I'm sleeping, not yeah. necessarily completely out of trading, even though it's working. I know that if, if, the, if the market all of a sudden crash, I'm not going to burn, but it's going to hurt me. And It'll change, I yeah. have other incomes of money. So the yeah. book is one income that is going to keep on giving, but I love to work with your age. You're 18 yeah. to 30, that's my niche. I love to coach, life coach people in that age. You know, I, I, yeah. that's my passion. You know, I'm, I live it, you know. So, um. That's where I see me going in the next in the next year. It's uh, 
workshop, uh, book, trading, flipping. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, think, uh, I, I think that it's such an undervalued thing to think about is that, like, again, like we talked about, like trading is awesome and like the money's great, but there's a million other ways to make money. And trading, like it kind of goes back to your roots, right? Like you weren't so stressed about trading when you were, when you had money in the bank. And now as you're better at trading and you know it, like if you have other sources of income, like trading becomes even less stressful and you're going to evolve and level up again. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I, I just think a big part of why you were successful was that like, um, it wasn't that you focused on pulling money out of the market, but it was just that you focused on stability and you knew that you were stable and you knew that you were okay. And that, that that gave you that clear head and that clear mindset when you were executing you didn't have fomo you weren't going all over the place you yeah. weren't shorting at the lows you weren't buying at the highs you were able to have that almost stability mindset to allow you to really go in after you had watched the videos and do what needed to be done whereas a lot of people are going to keep shorting the front side because they need money. They want money. They, they, they want a Lamborghini. They wanted this, they wanted that. And they're doing all of this for the wrong reasons. When if you just wait for the backside and that momentum shift and you go short, you know, it, it, it's so much easier than just fighting all the way up. But I mean, that can bring us into another topic of what people really want from the market. Do they really want to make money consistently or do they want to keep fighting every day? Because some people just want to fight, 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 fight. Mm -hmm. And the easiest trades for me work right away. You know, there's no second guessing. They work, exactly. they work right away. Like I'm, I'm making money right away. I don't need to fight. Uh, they work right away. And if I feel like I'm fighting something, I cut it right away. Whereas a lot of people love to get that fight, to get that entertainment, to get that, I don't know, adrenaline, whatever. They love Gambling. to get in a boxing match. Whereas someone like me, you know, I've done that. I don't need to fight something when it's on the backside. I'd rather just go with the flow, stick with the trend, take the easier money on, uh, you know, with the trend going the way it's kind of going. And, um, you know, that, that's just what I kind of want to do. But I, I know a lot of people love to fight and love to kind of get in that mindset. So I think for you, it was really just that stability mindset, that flow mindset that, I'm just going to trade with the trend and kind of ignore everything else mindset that really got you to where you, you are today. And, and people think that I'm constantly trading. I'm constantly in the computer, but I actually open like one position a week or two position. And that's it because I, I've been doing videos and the videos, if the, like, for example, they call XL today and I wanted it, but I wanted it as an option. And I put an option, I, I got it, I, I liked the call. I, I, one of the members uh, gave it, it wasn't a mod, it was a member, and I, I liked it where Love it that. is. And, and, and I'm like, okay, if I wanna get it, I wanna get it here at support. And the, the option, it didn't hit, so I'm okay. So uh, yeah. it didn't See, it didn't that hit. right there, nah. that right there is huge. Yeah, but you just said I, if it didn't hit, it didn't hit, it didn't hit. It so didn't okay. hit, and that's it. I can show you in the computer, in the in the telephone yeah. that it said that the option it didn't, it didn't hit. I'm, okay, okay, I, I leave to trade another day. I'm yep. not chasing. In swing trading, you cannot chase. You just have to wait. And I've, yep. I've been, in the videos, I've been saying my process. I I just put alarms, and my alarms in Tinker Swing are connected to my phone. So every time an alarm switches. I get a message in my telephone number. So I'm not watching 150 yep. stocks. I'm, the only thing I'm doing is for the phone to go off. And once the phone go off, I look at the stock. It's, if it's not getting killed, and then I look into the, because my niche in swing trading is $1 to $20. I, I will yep. not trade. So NEO, that everybody knows that. Everybody knows that I'm long NEO. But I haven't traded NEO in a year. Yeah. You know, I, I, my, my last, I just turned, when I, when I took the Joe's bootcamp, the day after I took Joe's bootcamp, I went in $16 calls on NEO and I turned them into shares two weeks ago. Like they were like 40 something dollars in the morning. You yeah. know? Wow. Because I just waited and waited. And that's the only position I have added to my core position of NEO. But I haven't, I haven't bought 
uh, uh, chairs to keep me a fifty dollar. I will not. Uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, my 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 niche is one dollar to twenty dollar. Like for example, SNDL that is moving today, and Bob was commenting on it. I've been in since forty cents, forty seven oh, wow. cents, my average. I've That's been. Cool. I, I I saw. I, I went in the third week of December because I wow. know that this administration they want marijuana, energy sector, solar sector, EV solar. You know, I was in FCAL. I was in in um, what was the NNDM, those yeah. old energy. And I was so much in the money. And when the Trump thing happened, the capital thing happened, I got scared. I thought that the market was going to crash. And I got out of a lot. I, I, yeah. I took like uh, out of the position, I, I went like 30% cash. And after yeah. that day, they just exploded. I left like maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 because of getting out. But I will not change I will yeah. not chase them back. The, I am yeah. done. I took I took a stand. I, I took a decision. The decision was to get cash out, and and I didn't went back in because I see so many people that they get out and they they continue seeing the stock going up. And ah, it's living without me, dude. There, are how many two thousand, three thousand stocks that you could choose from? Move More. to the yeah. next. Move, the, yeah. move to the next 100%. one. And that's it. Do not chase. If you chase, you're playing a, a losing game because you're mm -hmm. gonna get that stock eventually is going to go down, you know? Yeah. So, so as we're coming up on our, on our kind of hour mark, uh, what I want you to give, because I think a lot of people are going to like really come reach out to you after this, because I think a lot of people like swing trading and the idea, what is one big lesson? Like the number one thing you would tell every trader in MIC, what is like your biggest lesson that you've learned from this? And what is it you want people to do to become successful? You have to have the right mindset yeah. and discipline and patience. That's it. There, yeah. there's, no, there's nothing else because people keep saying, what is the secret? There's no secret. It's patience and discipline. You need to set up your rules. My rule, let me. I love it. Yeah. I Pain. love that. Rule. <laughs> rules those are my rules and i keep yep. writing them and i read this at least one every day you know i had a losing day here these are like i don't know if you can see it but yeah, yeah. Yep. i was i was losing on gamestop gamestop i was in at 1478 and that day i was losing 1300 dollars this was <laughs> of course before. Yep. 14, seven, and I was long a hundred shares. So imagine mm -hmm. this, I would have taken it to 500, you know, yep. and I cut it out. You know, I, I, I was playing with, we were always talking with Oren because I took, uh, I was playing GameStop since eight. I took it to 20 and then earnings came out and it went down. And as it was getting going down from 20 to 12, it went down. I, I saw between 15 and 16. But once it went down to 12, I forgot to like go in again. So yeah. it left without me. And I'm like, and I had uh, options too. And I, I, I forgot about it. I had it in my, I'm in my screen. And when it started doing what it did last week, I saw it, but I don't chase. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm long AMC right now, but I'm long and I haven't cut it out because I'm a greedy. And that's another thing. That's <laughs> another thing. Answer to your question. Damn fucking greed, man. If you're greed, you're gonna get fucked up, you know? Yep. I could have sold AMC at $25, but I said, you know what? My average four. So because it's four, I'll wait to it for it to go to 50. And it yep. hasn't got to 50. And <laughs> I keep lowering. Today, I was, I said, I had orders at 20. In the morning, when it opened, it opened at 18. So it didn't cut me. And I said, if it went to 18, it's gonna go to 20. Now I'm, I'm putting my order at 16. I keep going. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it always goes. Because of the, damn, of the damn greed, you know? And yep. th that's another thing, man. If, you, if you're greedy, you're going to get so frustrated in this game, man. Because oh, it's, I'll it's, never make it. It's what you yeah. guys say. Harry's constantly saying it. What the process gives you, or, or you, James. It's yep. what the process gives you. Don't, don't push for more. Just yeah. take for granted what it gives you. When you hit that cover button or your or that sell button, be grateful that you make that money. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. And, and, and you live to trade another day. This to me, this is a game. 
but this game cost me that I no longer have to go out to, to, yep. to work. You know, now yep. I can enjoy my kids. I can do homework with my kids. I can enjoy my wife. I can do whatever I want. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm, I'm to get vaccinated so I can start traveling. I have a, I have a, a, an appointment with Amin in Dubai. I have a, an appointment with AK Wildlife in Alaska. I want to <laughs> go to Australia and see Pema. I want to go to New York and see Midtown. You know, that's the most beautiful thing about the community. I, I'm crazy that I say that, that I'm crazy that I want I want to say I want to go to Hawaii. Who's in Hawaii? Ah, Aloha is in Hawaii. Okay, let's meet up and yeah. let's do something because he can tell me where to stay, what to yeah. do, the cool, the cool restaurant, the cool things to do and everything. And if someone like tells me he wants to go to Puerto Rico, I, I'll hook them up. That's the beautiful thing about the community. Everybody helps each other, not inside trading only. Outside of trading in life, you can get to know the world. We have members from everywhere in the world. Advantage of that. I want to go to Rome. Sure. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Spain. There are members everywhere, and they'll be crazy to meet up with you. You know. Yeah. You have all of us have one thing in common: is trading. But apart from that, there's life. So let's let, let's live. You know. I love it. I love it. Well, Clau, I love that so much, and I want to end on that because I think that is the best message you could possibly give. Yeah. And I want to thank you for coming on. Um, and I, any members that really want to reach out, I'm sure they can DM you. Uh, and yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful for the opportunity of being in the community. I'm grateful for having such a wonderful mod right with me. You know? Fucking love it, man. Fucking it. It's beautiful, man. Love, I love it, man. It, okay? Love Uncle you too, man. brother.